Hey YouTube, and today we're doing a command line app in Rust. Our app will tell us the weather of our chosen city. We type in the city name, we get back local weather. Simple. We will need to take a command line arguments, process them, send a request to a weather API, and then parse the response for the info we want. So I don't have all the tools set up to predict the weather. <laughs> So I'm just gonna take it off an open API I find online. So to take in commands from the command line, we need to add this uh, dependency called struct opt. You can see here, I've already added it. Just add that into your dependencies. And now you can use it. Right, and what this lets us do is it basically parses the command line for us, so we don't have to add a load of code to manually parse it. So all we need to do is create a struct, and we're gonna call it CLI for a command line interface. And we're gonna have our argument, so we're gonna have our city, which was Berlin, so that'll be a string, country code. Now you can add like anything in here. And now this is where the magic happens. We're gonna derive struct opt and this basically behind the scenes creates code for us that will handle and parse the command line interface and put it into this struct for us so now we all we need to do really is just do let arguments args equal command line interface that we are struct just here and now we're going to um, get from arguments And basically from args, we'll you know, parse that uh, command line and put it into args for us. And now to show you, we, all we, we can print out the arguments that we've just taken in. So if we go cargo run Berlin DE, just compiling. There you go, our city, I'll zoom in here a bit for you. Our city, Berlin, our country code DE. So now that we have our arguments, we want to pass those to an API that will go fetch the data for us about the weather of Berlin and return it to us. So the API we're going to use is going to be from openweathermap.org and you can see it's going to look something like this. It will give us our wind, cloudiness, pressure, humidity, rain. And I have a link here called API. And you can see all the different kind of forecasts they give you. For now, we're just gonna stick with the current weather if we go to API documents, it'll show you how to call the API. So we'll probably go for this one, city name, state code, and country code, although you can leave out state code. I think that's mostly just for the US. Basically, you click subscribe, and then you get the free API, and then you just click get key. I've already signed in, I already have my key. We can get an example here we go down let's see call the city by name yeah they give an example for london uk this is what our uh, response will look like in json so the way i want to go about this is go i'm going to create a struct for the json that we get and organize all of these different um, values so our main struct is going to be forecast and I'm just gonna put it together here. Right, so I've put together our forecast struct. It's going to have the coordinates, uh, weather, base, main, visibility, wind, clouds, and all these other values. And then you can see, so base is a string Visibility is I32, but some of these others, so chord is goes to another struct called chord. The reason I'm doing this is because if you look at chord, it actually is a struct in itself, and it has values that it stores.
Right, so now I've created the struct for coord, and now coord here will point to this other struct coord. So now I'm going to do this for the, all the other structs, and I'll be right back. So we want to get the API, right? So what we'll do is that we'll implement our forecast struct. We'll have a function called get. Now this will be an asynchronous function. The reason for this is because we're sending a request or we're waiting for a reply and so on. And it's going to return a result type of itself or an error. So we're going to use a special error type called exit failure. And basically it's just a handy way to handle and that will be if we get an error it will uh, be an exit failure. So we're going to want to pass in our, our arguments. So we're going to have city, which will be a string, and we will have country code, which is also a string. Oops. So now for the actual uh, get request, we're going to use um, something called request. basically does the HTTP method for us. So all we have to do is pass it a URL. So we're going to use request and we're going to use, let's see, version 10. And we're going to use the feature, the JSON feature. because the reply we're going to get is going to be JSON and we want to be able to handle that. How are we actually converting the JSON uh, into our structs? And what we're going to use is something called Serday, which is stands for uh, serialize, deserialize. It's a library that basically allows us to change the format of a certain file. So here you can see all the data formats that it can handle JSON, YAML, TOML, and a few other strange ones in there. So we're going to have Serday and whatever version it suggests there. Now serde json and serde derive which will allow us to derive it into our structs. So we just put these up here. So we're going to use serde Drive deserialize. We'll just put in serialize as well. You, normally you'd have both of them, but I guess in this case we don't really need to serialize, but I'll just throw it in there anyways. Now above each of our structs, we're going to have this uh, derive. Basically, that's allowing us to serialize and deserialize each of these structs that we have for our JSON. Now we create our URL that we're going to send the request to. So we're going to let uh, URL equal, and then we're going to format this. So it's going to be a combination of whatever open weather's uh, URL is and our two values that we're passing in. So we'll have city and we will have country code. So now if we go to open weather, 
we can see here's our API. This is the one that we want. And we just throw that in here. We can match city name, which is city and country code. We'll get rid of state code. It'll work without it. Don't worry. And then we, this will be country code here and your API key. So we just copy paste in our API key that they gave us. So it's in under API keys. So now we have our string. We're going to put that into a URL. Uh, so we're going to change it again and we're going to use this URL parse command, which is comes with our crate and we just need to actually uh, dereference that. Oh, yeah, okay, so we haven't actually imported this yet. Use it. And now we just uh, put a question mark to, so without the question mark, it's going to give us a result of either a URL or an error when it's parsing it. So we're just going to put the question mark and the question mark basically propagates the error for us, but that's for another video. Now let us uh, create our response. So a response is going to have our request and we're going to do a get method. And we're going to use our URL that we've just created that will go to openweather.org. And now we do await. We're going to have to do a dot await because it's asynchronous. We're going to tell it we want it to be a forecast. We want it to be a forecast struct. So now it's going to deserialize it into a forecast for us. And then we wait for that. And if everything goes to plan, we send our response back. Now we need to call this from the main. Um, so we can do, I don't know, let response equal our forecast. And then we get our get method from that forecast. And we're going to pass in our arguments. So we're going to pass in args.city first and then args.country code. And actually we might just want to do this by reference so we can use these values later here when we're trying to print it out. So let me just restructure this a little bit. I have these as references. Shouldn't make a difference because we're formatting it to a new string here anyways. So, right. So we have our response, which, rep which gives us an implementation of a future. We can't actually uh, propagate the errors with another question mark here won't let us. So it says the operator cannot be applied to future. So to overcome this, we can use uh, another crate called Tokyo. And it is a runtime for reliable asynchronous applications in Rust. So we're just going to pull this into our Tamil. So basically with Tokio we can add it to our main function and it will let us to make our main asynchronous which will then allow us to apply a dot await to our response which will then handle our future for us instead of trying to implement a try method. And now you can see it's uh, giving us back a forecast instead of a future. And now we can basically get any value we want. And then we could have, um, let's see, uh, humidity. And it, I think it gives it in a percentage. So we'll just uh, put that in like that. Uh, Response.humidity. Hold on, response dot, right, it's in main and then humidity. So now if we cargo run Berlin, Germany. OK. 
Okay, and uh, we have an error. Okay, so I had a slight uh, spelling mistake in features and that's why it didn't compile. So let's try that again. URL without a base. Oh yes, okay. So we need to put the HTTP uh, at the beginning of the URL. Try that again. Finally, there we go. Okay, so now we have our city, Berlin, our country code, Germany, and humidity, 55%. So if we just put this API into uh, our browser and put in Berlin and DE for Germany, we should get that uh, humidity. If we have a look, hey, humidity, 55. So we're getting the exact same in hours, 55%. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.